Hi, I'm Lindsay Moss here with another episode of 123ART. And if you've been following this series, you know that we're thinking of ways that we can help our youngest artists meet the moment this fall as they return to school after the pandemic. In our series, we've covered a ton of interesting techniques to help these young learners get their fine motor ready for kindergarten and first grade. And you may have noticed that we're using a lot of interesting supplies. Our teachers love supplies. I know I love putting together my supply order. So in this episode, we're gonna focus all on adaptive supplies that might help your kindergartners and first graders in the fall. Uh, If you're interested in any of these supplies, check below for more information on them. So let's dive right in. We're gonna look at three types of supplies today that you may have seen in previous episodes, starting off with drawing and coloring supplies. So you may have noticed that my kindergarten friends who appeared in some of our videos were using a little bit different pencil because if you're dealing with young artists who don't have a well-developed pincher grasp yet, one thing they tend to do is hold their pencil in a fist or create sort of a strange way of kind of uh, gripping the bottom of the pencil. And something that can really help them is a little bit of a fatter pencil, especially if it has well-defined hexagonal sides. And you can see these pencils really help them get a better grip. And also it's a little bit shorter so they can flip it over and get to that eraser a little bit quicker. You'll also see in that video that there is a round pencil. And when they've kind of graduated and gotten a really firm pincher grasp ready, that round pencil can feel really nice in their hand. So the same thing kind of applies to coloring materials too. And um, one of my favorites right now are these crayons called Honey Sticks. They are a beeswax crayon, so they have like a really beautiful smell to them. And you'll notice that they come in a couple different sizes, and that's developmental because a normal Crayola crayon is really thin, right? And if you don't have the grasp down yet, it can be hard to hold it if you have a small hand. So you can see that Honey Sticks come in what's called longs, which is a longer crayon that's easier to grasp and form the correct grip with. Um, They also come in um, original, which is like a shorty type of crayon. They're really cute. They look like they're little and sawed off. And you might be thinking, why is that helpful? Well, it's almost impossible to form a fist over a crayon that's this short. So if you have a kiddo who loves to take it and grind the crayon on the paper, this is really perfect for them. It can really help them get that grip down. Also, Crayola's got some colored pencils I'm really into. They're right start colored pencils that have these hexagonal sides like we mentioned before. Um, So it really helps them. It's a little bit thicker, chunkier than those regular colored pencils so they can get the color on the paper and work on their pincher grass. So moving on to some of the supplies that I'm using for paint this fall. Number one, and maybe this isn't something you necessarily order, it's more of like an art teacher hack. I love using pet bowls with my kids because when you pour water into a pet bowl, it has such a wide base, it doesn't tip over as much. Um, So getting these at the dollar store is an excellent way to kind of minimize the spills that are happening in your classroom. Also, you may have seen these before in preschool programs. They're usually used to put paint in the bottom and they have like a little lid here and it encourages kids to kind of um, get excess paint off of their brush bristles before they paint. But this is really great for keeping water from tipping over. So I'm adding these to my supply list this fall to kind of help them with water management. Speaking more about painting, bulb brushes. These have a little bit of a thicker handle and it can feel really good in a tiny hand to give them a little bit more mark making control. Um, So they're a nice addition to sort of your arsenal of paintbrushes you might already have. I love watercolors, but sometimes it can be really tricky to have my youngest artist working with that full palette. There's so many colors in there, they get so excited and pretty soon they end up with sort of a brown painting, which I mean, is a yummy color for a milkshake, but sometimes by limiting their palette, um, they can be a little bit more successful. So this is actually a Crayola product. It's just larger pan watercolors. It's also just kind of easier for them to get contact between the brush and the um, pigment pan because it's just a little bit wider and larger. So moving on over to cutting and gluing, which I think is kind of the hardest thing for new kindergarten artists. A couple tricks that you may have seen me use in some of our other episodes are number one, spring scissors. But my favorite are these alligator ones. 
you, they're alligator scissors. Spring scissors are loaded in the back so that they, you don't have to um, close your hand and then open it all the way back up. It does it on its own. So it's a little bit easier to do a grasp like this. So you can work on the mechanics of just pushing um, those scissors forward and doing a repeated cut. You don't have to worry quite so much about the whole opening and closing of your hand. This is something I discovered recently and I'm kind of testing them out with my kids this fall. It's something called noggins. And what it is is it's a two-sided foam sticker and you can use it to indicate that a certain side is up. So if you're using traditional scissors, um, you can put them on the top side of the scissor or even better, you can put it on the top side loop where the thumb's supposed to go to help remind kids that you shouldn't be trying to cut upside down. It's thumbs up when you cut. A couple tricks for gluing. Um, this is an age old art teacher staple. If you're not already doing this, get ready. Um, but if you put a sponge from the dollar store in the bottom of just a container, pour glue on the top of it, a kid can just push a piece of paper down or a scrap of paper down and they get the right amount of glue on it without all the mess. If you feel like your kids are getting ready to graduate to actual glue, um, something that kind of helps them with the amount of glue is using um, these glue applicators. But because it has a brush, they can kind of concentrate on getting a thin film of glue on their project rather than a lake. And last but not least, these are just kind of fun, but it's a glue applicator. So if you have a kid that did pour that lake, oh my gosh, all over the project, you can have them sort of spread it out so that there is still some um, hope of saving that paper. So we just covered a ton of materials and you might be thinking that you need a huge budget to make this work. But remember, wonderful art programs aren't dependent on a huge budget. They're dependent on an art teacher's ingenuity and creativity. So think about a couple of these things maybe that might help your youngest learners this fall. Um, and we will go ahead and drop information on them in the description below. While you're down there, don't forget to comment. We want to continue the dialogue. So put in your favorites. What are your must buys for your young artists? And what do you always include on your supply list? We would love to hear from you. While you're there also, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see other content coming up from the Art of Education University.